Wow, they did it. Disney finally made a movie about Disney movies. Uh, seriously, the meta references in Wish are so overblown with winking at the camera about past Disney properties that the movie forgets to, you know, be its own actual movie. Or at least so in a meaningful way that goes beyond your typical generic Disney tropes. Hmm. If only they owned a property that featured a variety of iconic Disney characters crossing over. Uh, oh well. For those who don't know, Disney is celebrating their 100th year anniversary of their animation studio. Now that's quite the accomplishment. And they already celebrated this monumental achievement with Once Upon a Studio, a short that really made me miss 2D animated Disney films, but hey, I will take what I can get, which apparently is not much. But then you got Wish, the actual movie being released on Disney's 100th anniversary. Now, I do not envy Wish. You got some pretty big shoes to fill considering the legacy of the studio. Plus, recent Disney releases have been, um, shall we say, turbulent as of late. I was so serious about watching this movie that I avoided the hell out of trailers and teasers. All I knew going into this movie was something about this controversy in regards to the visuals looking incomplete. That this was apparently a stylized choice but many saw said style as something that wasn't fully rendered. However, I was not deterred. I wanted this movie to prove itself through its quality and for me to be unencumbered by online bias. The results? <laughs> A disappointing nothing burger that reeks of corporate meddling. While watching the movie, I felt like I was checking off boxes with how predictable the movie was. When it came to Disney storytelling tropes, a quirky main character who sings about her problems? Check. The comic relief animal sidekick. Check. Uh, the silent non-human side character who can be turned into a marketable plushie. Check. Now, I should not be surprised to find these common denominators in a Disney movie. It is their brand, after all. But I've never seen them on display so unapologetically before. I'm talking. I am talking. Ha! Who knew my voice would be this low? But hey, before we start, I want to give a big shout out to this video sponsor, Raycon Earbuds. So, Raycon has been the longest running sponsor on my channel. Like, they go all the way back to 2019, and they have been consistently helping me to take care of my team who edit these videos, so thank you, Raycon. Like, it's wild to see how far they have come since 2019. I've been promoting their everyday earbuds for like years now, which I've been using for years now. At the gym, at home, while doing chores, while talking to friends on the phone, just all the time. The name of these earbuds is apt because I use them every day. But now Raycon has some new products in addition to their earbuds and headphones. There's the Magic 180 cable, an all-in-one charging cord that is built to last and compatible with iOS, micro USB, and Type-C devices. They also have, and this one surprised me, a faucet filter. I guess they know clean audio and clean water, which hey, let's be real, both are equally important. These are premium tech products at a great price. They have incredible five-star reviews, and Raycon offers free and easy returns, free shipping, and buy now and pay later options. Also, Raycon has Black Friday and Cyber Monday promotions across their entire website, with select products up to 50% off. You can save even more because Raycon is also offering limited time bundles. So go check out Raycon's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales for their biggest holiday discounts yet. Go to buyraycon.com slash saberspark to get up to 50% off site-wide. Guys, these are Raycon's biggest holiday discounts ever and they're only available for one week. So make sure to shop by November 27th. Go hit them up today. Boom, did we just blow your mind? Uh -huh. Well, I've known the entire time. So what's the movie about? Disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this review. Wish is about Asha, a 17-year-old girl who lives in the land of Rosas. This land is ruled over by a king sorcerer named Magnifico. He has the capability to grant the wishes of his subjects, though not every wish that is requested is granted. Asha here is trying to get her grandfather's wish to come true for his 100th birthday. Oh, 100, huh? you think you're sly, Disney. Well, Asha gets a chance to ask the king to grant her grandfather's wish, only to discover that Magnifico can't, because the wish is too vague? That his wish of, I want to inspire people of the next generation could mean something good or something bad? Like rebellion? 
<laughs> yeah, so begins the convoluted magical aspect of the movie and how the concept is obtuse yet paper thin at the very same time. I'll talk more about this issue here in a bit. Oh, by the way, uh, the way this works is when a person makes a wish, said wish manifests as a bubble with a little like dreamlike visual of being a hero, sailing a boat, uh, making dresses, etc. And said wishes are kept in Magnifico's tower. The wishes themselves kind of like remind me of the wish radio from We're Back, a dinosaur story. Yes, a deep cut reference for those of the Kino variety. I wish I had a mustache just like dad, just like daddy. Also, when you make a wish, you forget what the wish was. So it's a bit of a trade off, especially if you never get your wish granted, which is like <laughs> the majority of the kingdom. You gotta feel bad for the person who wished they did not have dementia. So Asha, in her despair, stumbles across a magical star that wants to help her free the wishes of the people. Also, there's a talking goat. Uh, the king goes psycho mode and is trying to find Asha and the star because he's jealous of its magic. At the end, Asha uses the power of song along with the people to defeat the king and return the wishes to the kingdom. The end. And yeah, I got some problems with this film. Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. Let's start off with the most glaring issue of the entire film, magic. Magic, like time travel, can be an unruly plot device if not grounded in rules. You gotta give us some parameters that somewhat make sense even if they're wildly fictitious. In Wish, the concept behind magic and wishes was far too broad and very confusing. For example, what is evil magic? Oh, okay, it's green, but why is it evil? What can it do? The one rule we do know about it is that if you use it, you become permanently enslaved by it. Yet somehow the king, a mighty sorcerer with a library full of magical books, did not read the fine print. Wow, that doesn't make sense. Now what about the star? Is its magic different from the king's? What can the star even do? It's a wishing star, so I imagine it grants wishes, but it never did. Or at least not directly. All it could do is make animals and plants talk and make chickens big, and <laughs> that's about it. Now, there is something about its magic making people feel a sense of warmth and joy, I guess? Yeah, again, feels vague and confusing. But it's the wishes that frustrate me the most. For clarity, the king is the de facto ruler of wishes and can grant a singular wish once a month. That's 12 a year, so in the average lifetime of a human, let's say around a thousand wishes are granted more or less. So your odds of getting your wish? Hmm, pretty damn low. But you 100% lose the memory of your wish even if it doesn't come true. What's the point of having a wish then? You're basically stuck with a sense of forlorning and emptiness. And mind you, the king knows if he's not going to grant a wish, but he doesn't tell you. That is fucking cruel. Also, why only one wish per month? It's obviously arbitrary because in the movie, the king decides to hold a random wishing ceremony to placate the people, which means any reason for staggering wishes isn't from a place of magical inability, but more due to personal principle. It's like everybody's stupid. Ah, sorry guys, I can only grant one wish per month because I said so. Thanks for giving up your dreams and sense of fulfillment as a wish bubble on the rare off chance that it might be granted. Uh, enjoy being void of purpose and fulfillment for the rest of your life until the day you die, never knowing what you could have achieved. Bye. Like the more I think about it, the more I see that how stupid this plot device is and how it leaves the movie with dozens of plot holes. Now I assume that the person making the wish knows what wish they want to make. So the blame is all on them for taking this path to begin with. The grandfather wanted to leave something behind to inspire the next generation? Okay, that's noble. And the wish bubble shows that he can do this through music. But the king is like, nah, that's dangerous, bro. What if it backfires because it's too vague? First off, fuck you movie for using the word vague. That's the pot calling the kettle black right there. Next, it's not vague, because you can see the context of the wish right in front of you, unless these visions are misleading. If so, then explain that movie! Maybe through the king's tragic backstory that you allude to but never explain? 
That could have at least given us something to work with here when it comes to the rules of magic and sifting through wishes. But nah, just cryptic rules and inexplicable logic. Also, let me just say that this idea of the king fearing the backfiring of wishes. <laughs> well, good luck controlling that kind of omnipresence because guess what? Sometimes not having your wish granted can lead to an unfortunate end. There was once this Austrian boy who wanted to be an artist and failed in his wish. And yeah, <laughs> not a happy ending. Don't worry guys, it was an illumination film. Again, the movie had the chance to validate this apprehension of the king through backstory, but we never get that. We never quite understand his principles, except that he's a covert jealous narcissist, which just is not enough for a compelling villain to me. So the citizens being happy and dancing at the start? Not sure why, when they are canonically ignorant and empty of purpose, or well, at least the ones who haven't been granted their wishes. Halfway through the movie though, the people of the kingdom rub their two brain cells together and are like, hold the fort. I think we're getting screwed here, guys. And eventually come around to retaining their wishes so they can make them come true. Now, is this movie about making your own wishes come true? Because I'm all for a story that champions the theme of agency and self-determination. Screw your magic. I have the indomitable will of the human spirit and I will do it myself or die trying that perhaps the magic we perceive is actually the magic within all of us. Except, you know, uh, this message is kind of eroded by the literal magic at the end of the movie. It's like the movie wanted to have it both ways, which robs any meaningful impact of the conclusion and the message of the film. Oh, a fairy godmother who grants wishes, but you don't say it flat out because of the implication. Also, you better believe Disney would never support a message that foregoes magic and wishes, since that is so ingrained into their brand. Gah, I never expected to have this much to say about the movie, but it really is just that much of a clusterfuck. I was so ready to just enjoy Wish for what it was, but I was constantly raising my eyebrow going, what, throughout the entire film. Where was I? Oh yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the characters. There is our protagonist, Asha. Outwardly, she's great. I genuinely dig her design with her hair and freckles and the color of her outfit, but her personality falls flat. The quirky, adorkable girl trope has just become so tired and predictable that it does not feel like there's anything unique about her that sets her apart from other quirky Disney princesses. Wait, hold on. Is Asha considered a princess? Cause she wasn't one in the movie. <laughs> well, uh, the honorary princess, I guess. Like. Mulan and um, Pocahontas, because technically they're not uh, via monarchy princesses, but you know, who cares? Asha's motivations were shallow to say the least. She wants to make everyone's dream come true? Oh, how selfless. She just cares too much. Boring! Yeah, I really threw some bravado into that one. Uh, like, compare this to Moana, who had the righteous cause of saving her people from obliteration and also had a fight with Shea Frillis. There's just a lack of development from Asha's personality, which just seems insincere and basic to me. Then there's a the talking goat. Then there's the kindly old grandfather. He wanted to inspire a generation of people through music. Question, was he always a musician? The movie doesn't say. Sounds like he just wanted his dreams to be handed to him. Ha! Huh. Get a job, hippie. Then there's the mom. Nothing really to say here. She was just empty. She had like a wish, uh, but we never found out what it was. Then there was the star. Cute, and I'm sure he'll sell many squishmallows. Then there are the seven friends. What a gimmick. Was it really worth sacrificing seven characters in order to make a seven dwarfs reference? Yeah, that's actually what it was. Doc, Grumpy, Sneezy, Bashful, Dopey, Happy, Thorin, and Sleepy the Traitor. Yeah, Sleepy betrays everyone to get his wish, but it's forgiven at the end? You know what? Sure, who, who fucking cares? I guess Disney felt the need to include their first animated film and their 100th anniversary film by shoehorning in a reference, and let me tell you, that's just one of many. I'll talk more about the Easter eggs here in a bit. Then there's the king and queen. Uh, the queen was essentially worthless and stood around mostly going, honey, that's bad. But the king, oh, he's the worst character in the entire film. I already explained the confusion behind his magic logic, but it gets so much worse. 
Look, I thought that Magnifico had the potential to be a lot more enjoyable than he actually was. Again, this sort of explained his reasoning for not wanting to grant everyone's wishes, because it might be dangerous. But he flips into full-on villainy on a dime. It's actually kind of hilarious how quickly he switches into crazy villain mode. Let me explain. For some reason, uh, Magnifico lets Asha into his innermost secret sanctum and reveals the truth behind the wishing orbs. Like he meets for like a meeting to like make her his intern. And then within five minutes, he's like, yo, Asha, let me tell you the truth. And she's horrified. And Magnifico's like, hey, Asha, I thought we were cool. Bro, why did you reveal your secret to Asha so effortlessly? Why didn't they show how some of the wishes might actually be dangerous or how granting everyone's wishes have done horrible things in the past? Instead of him just vaguely saying, oh, it might happen. What exactly are his motivations? Just to continue to stay in power? That's kind of lame. He's lame. You wanna know what would have been a million times better? If Asha was the daughter of the king. Boom, one, she's a princess now. And also, now we have some tension and stakes. And it makes so much more sense why she would discover such a horrifying revelation and would want to challenge her dad about it. I could understand those motives. Oh, and get this, apparently, in the development phase of the movie, the king and queen were both evil. Oh man, that would have been fucking great. Asha having to face both parents? Forgoing everything in order to stand by her principles, her friends, and her people? Now those are stakes. Also, I would love to see a Disney villain couple song. Like the couple are madly in love like Morticia and Gomez from the Addams Family, but they're delightfully evil instead. Ugh, we were robbed of so much potential. On top of that, when the wishing star falls and spreads that magical warm light or whatever the hell it is, it doesn't actually do anything. Everyone is just like, oh, that was nice. Now I understand that the king feels threatened that there's a source of magic in his kingdom that did not come from him. But why does he switch into villainy so quickly over that? Wouldn't it have made more sense if the wishing star started granting everyone's wishes and that loss of control and power would have made him go crazy? At what point did he assume there was a traitor amongst them? Was there ever any indication that the power came from someone who betrayed the kingdom? I mean, I guess he realized that the grandfather's wish was missing when Asha took it back, but it's comical how much else is left up in the air for chance. In fact, I think they just look at the song, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes from Cinderella and just tried to mutate the lyrics into a story. Quote, uh, no matter how your heart is grieving, if you keep on believing, a dream that you wish will come true. It's a great song. And it's a staple in Disney's history, just as much as Wish Upon a Star. And I kind of get the impression that that's what the message they were trying to channel at the end of the movie, when everyone starts singing to break free of the king's evil green magic hands. Look, I want to find some sincerity behind this story, but the whole movie just feels like it's celebrating the legacy of Disney and tossing in references for the sake of member, member, member. Oh, and the references. So many references that they make you wonder if Disney is alluding to some kind of expanded Disney universe. Uh -huh. Kingdom Hearts. Uh -huh. Kingdom Hearts. In actuality, the movie just winks at the camera and moves on, obviously because they are paying homage to Disney's 100th anniversary. Ah, uh, hey, that's cool. Should have made a movie that was more than checkboxes to attach said references to. Because now the references drag the movie down. I don't care that you hint at the king being trapped as the magic mirror from Snow White. I don't care about this overt reference to the seven dwarves. I don't care about Asha looking like the fairy godmother. And believe it or not, I don't care about the Zootopia reference. There was a Zootopia reference as I live and breathe. I just want a good movie with substance, not calculated Disney story beats and Easter eggs. It's wild to me how I was prepared to be more stuck on the visuals and the animation of the movie. But it's the story that is the most glaring issue to me. While watching, I was like, oh yeah, uh, the visuals, they look a little incomplete. But that was inconsequential compared to the flaws of the narrative. Now, let's say the movie was in 2D, okay? That would have done wonders for massaging over the flaws of the story. But as it is, huh, yeah, not terrific. I truly feel so bad for the folks who worked on this movie under Disney's executive leadership. 
I never fault the artists who follow orders. They are just trying their best. And many of them provide awesome creative ideas that are left behind in development. Also, according to a Twitter account from someone who worked on Wish, they said that the movie suffered from massive layoffs at Disney. So I can only imagine that these artists were stretched thin with their task and were probably doing the work for two or three individuals. Also, they stated that there was corporate meddling in the film to change its trajectory and that many of the artists who worked on Wish felt that it wasn't a 100th year celebration of the beloved legacy of Disney, that it was more like a celebration of the corporation and brand it has become. Disney feels more like a product of anything, and that's a sad revelation to consider on the studio's 100th anniversary. In this ever-evolving landscape of animation, Disney is falling behind. I can't believe that if things get worse, I might end up doing a What's Ruining Disney Animation video. I'd rather not, because I have such respect and adulation for the studio and its legacy, but the executives are making it difficult to have hope. I mean, we finally get a Disney villain who isn't 100% a twist villain, and he sucks. Come on, Disney. If you fumble Zootopia 2, then you have truly fallen. But hey, those are just the rambling thoughts of a sad mid-30-year-old man. What can I say? But what did you think of Wish? Am I wrong? Am I right? Let me know what you all think down in the comments. Like or dislike this video and subscribe for more future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.